I'm in Hanover today at Conte, where I'm gonna meet Kara, and she's head of a project that is quite unexpected. Hi, hi, Andrea. Nice to meet you. Let's go over there. How can we see the rubber then in these roots? The we can roots? try to uh, very um, yeah to, to break it and yeah? not too much, just okay. very very carefully, and then to see um, the rubber in between. You see it, yeah. Okay, so that is the rubber. That is the rubber, this tiny white bands in between. So this means pretty much if I just harvest my dandelions at home and I will give them to you, you will get rubber for the tires. No, no, we don't want to have them because they do not have any rubber in, your, uh -huh. in the roots. Okay, okay, yeah. so it's like a, a special type of yeah, dandelion. Yeah, it's the Russian that... dandelion, which uh -huh. has just the possibility and the chance to make uh, rubber okay. in its root. Okay. <laughs> What are then, if you compare to, to natural rubber that we are used to in, in the tires, what is then the positives with, yeah, with the dandelion uh, rubber? The rubber tree itself just only grows in the tropical area yeah. where also rainforest is growing. Yeah, yeah. And uh, dandelion is growing more or less everywhere where you yeah. have moderate climate zones. So we have much more area where we are able to cultivate. Yeah. And for increasing the demands, you also have mm -hmm. uh, not the pressure anymore on the rainforest because you need more acreage for um, growing natural rubber yeah, and then you yeah. can do it in other areas where it's not that sensitive. When do you believe that it will be possible to, to get all the rubber from all these dandelions to actually produce a, a function a tire? I guess we start doing that in the next five to ten years. Wow, that's really cool. Okay, I want to be the first one to try those. <laughs> yes.